How to acquire wells. Okay, let's talk about it because I got this question. Hello, I work in the oil and gas industry as a company man on the completion side. I've been intrigued by your recent purchase of the vertical well. I'm curious how you got into the business of buying wells and where you even go to find them. This has been a consideration of mine for some time now, but I am uh, having difficulty putting any numbers together as wells don't seem to be readily available here. Thanks for your time. So first, let me tell you what we did as an oil company and kind of our business model. We didn't start out acquiring wells. We started out acquiring equipment to work on our own wells. Yeah, it was during COVID and the oil and gas industry completely crashed. It was in the tank and equipment was available everywhere. It was like a fire sale. You could buy stuff really cheap. We wanted to stand up a service company so we could work on our own wells. Being able to work on your own wells makes them much more economic. During COVID, we were buying equipment for our service company for less than 10 cents on the dollar. We were buying this stuff really cheap. We didn't borrow a dime. We spent all of our own money. To give an example, we bought a $400,000 E-Line truck for about $25,000. Yeah, and we were buying that stuff left and right. Now, most wells have multiple owners. One company may own 70% of a well, another company may own 15% of the well, and another company may own the other 15% of the well. If you're the company that owns the 70% of the well, or if you're one of the companies that own 15% of the well, the important thing is that you become the operator. Now, whoever operates the well doesn't necessarily mean they're the majority owner. As a matter of fact, some operators of wells don't own any interest in the well at all. You may drive by a well site and see a sign that says XYZ Company, you know, Exploration. They may not own any bit of that well. They may just be the operator. An operator is just like a manager of a well and gets to make the decisions over that well. So let's say we have 70% of a well and other people have 30% of a well and we decide to go work on it with our own equipment. We charge for that equipment. And the people that own the 30% of that well pay us to work on that well that we own 70% of. So not only do we get to make the money of working on our own wells, we get to make the money of the well production itself. It's quite lucrative. It's another way to bring your cost way down. A lot of times, being able to bill the other interest owners in a well literally zeroes out your cost. But you get all the benefit of the production. So we stood up a service company first, and then we started acquiring wells. First, we signed a management services agreement with a company to manage their assets because they had sort of walked away from them. They had really failed in the field and moved on to more a more prolific field in another part of the country. They didn't have a lot of success in the field we're in. We signed an agreement with that company that we would manage their assets. And in that agreement, any wells that we reworked that were theirs, we, if we chose to, we could use our own money to invest in fixing those wells. So we would invest 80% of the cost and we would get 80% of the well when we were done. And the other company would retain 20%. Their other option was to never get nothing because they were never going to work on the well. Since we were using our own equipment to work on the wells, uh, <laughs> We were literally able to bill the company that was giving us 80% of the well for our work on the well. Like they paid us for 20% of our cost. So if, you know, if we charge them $10,000 to use our own equipment to work on our well, you know, they'd have to give us a couple of grand. But the main way we have acquired wells is, or a big way, another big way we've acquired wells is having wells given to us. We haven't bought a lot of wells. We've had them given to us for plugging in abandonment liability. And we can do that because we have the equipment to plug our own wells. A lot of companies take wells for plugging in abandonment liability. They get them for free. They take that liability. They strip the surface equipment. They pull the tubulars out of the well. They take everything off the site and they sell it. And then they leave the well there and they orphan it. And then it becomes the taxpayer's burden. That's illegal, that's unethical, and we don't do that. That's why we stood up a plugging company before we even started, so we can plug our own wells. If we acquire a well and we can't make it produce, we can make money plugging it because we can go plug the well, we can take all the surface equipment, we can take the tubulars, we can take everything and sell it or utilize it on other wells that we own. So when you start looking for wells to acquire for plugging and abandonment liability, what you want to look for is wells that have a lot of surface equipment, Um, You want to look for wells where everything is there. Surface equipment there, if there's a pump jack there, that's worth a lot of money. Tubing rods, casing in the hole, that's worth a lot of money. Uh, You might stay away from H2S wells. A lot of times that means that the tubulars down hole are going to be rotted. If the condition of all of the equipment on the well site itself is in good shape, then you're going to be golden no matter what, even if you have to pay to plug the well, because you can sell all of that equipment and make more money than you spent plugging it. 
another thing you'll find, you know, you got to just start calling oil companies. You got to start calling them. And that's a lot of time on the phone. It, it may take 20 phone calls to get to the right person for an oil company to give you five oils for plugging and abandonment liability. Once you have someone on the line, you can get all the data from the wells. You can find mistakes they made. You can go through all the well reports, all the daily reports. You can go through the logs. You can see if there's uphole recompletion potential. Uh, a lot of times you find silly little mistakes that they made and you can, for a very limited investment, you can get those wells back online, you know, pumping five, 10, 15 barrels of oil a day. These companies have so many wells, they have thousands of them that they get lost in the mix, so to speak. And they don't have enough personnel to look at every one of these wells and, and their potential. And plus, they don't care about 10 barrel a day wells. They're looking for 1,000 barrel a day wells. But some guy with a well that produces 10 barrels a day, I mean, that's like 800 bucks a day, right? What if you could do that 100 times? How much is that? You want your locations to be small. You don't ever want to take a well from a company that has a big five acre location and a 100,000 barrel frag pit because it's going to cost you a quarter million dollars to remediate that land. So look for small, downsized locations with a lot of equipment on it. That's what you're looking for. Uh, then look at the well potential, recompletion potential. Look at the well reports. Hell, we've gotten wells given to us that just needed a new pump put in it. The advantage is, is that those oil companies are trying to get rid of as much plugging and abandonment liability as possible because that does not look good on their balance sheet. If you've got $500 million in cash in the bank and you have, you know, I don't know, $300 million in liabilities, then you don't have $500 million in the bank. you got $200 million in the bank. And the easiest way to increase that value is to just give away your liabilities because people will take them. So I honestly would not recommend buying wells. I would recommend spending the time on the phone calling every oil company you've ever heard of. You can look them up there. You're going to find a lot of companies you've never heard of because there's a lot of mom and pop companies too. Get them on the phone and start talking to them about uh, taking wells from them for plugging and abandonment liability. And a lot of those companies have a lot of wells that they will just give away. And in, within those wells, you will find gems. A lot of them will ask you to take about five wells knowing that maybe one of them is good, you only need one of them to be good. If you can recomplete that well up hole and prove that another zone is productive, what you're doing is you're, you're not only making that well productive and making the money off of it, you're proving the acreage. Once you've proven the acreage, you can go back to other oil companies and say, hey, I got this well, you know, it's in this particular zone and it's producing 50 barrels of oil a day in a vertical. And then that oil company says, wow, 50 barrels a day in a vertical, that's not bad. If I, we drilled a big horizontal well there, how much would it make? Would it make 1,000 barrels of oil a day? A lot of times they will come in and they'll drill a big horizontal well on your acreage that you get a piece of, that you don't have to invest a dollar in. Right now we have contracts for the next three years for oil companies to drill wells on our acreage because we have proven so much. We have proven so many zones on our acreage that oil companies are clamoring to come drill on us. We don't have the money to drill 10 wells at 15 million bucks a pop. So we'll just let someone else drill them and we'll take a cut. We'll take a percentage. It's called mailbox money. It's pretty legit. But let's say you don't have the resources to do all that, but you can acquire wells. But you have to be good at acquiring the, the right wells. Good logs, good cement, good wells. Don't matter if they produce or not. Once you acquire those wells, you take those wells to an old company like mine. And you say, hey, I got these. You want them? And then what we'll do is we'll look at them. And if we agree, we'll say, sure, we will recomplete this well. And you'll get a piece of it. We'll spend all the money and you'll get a cut. What have you spent? You've spent the time on the phone to find the well. We come in, we take all the risk. We take all of the uh, burden of the investment dollars. And, you know, we pop a well that makes 50 barrels of oil a day. And you get 15% of it or whatever you negotiate. That's a great way to start when you don't have a ton of capital is by making deals and acquiring things for free and then using those things as leverage to negotiate other deals with other companies. It's a very long and arduous process, but it is worth it. We started our company a little over, you know, I started with this company two years ago. We had 14 wells. Now we have 160 wells, 80,000 acres. We have a natural gas plant. We have saltwater disposals. We've done all of this through what I'm telling you right now. So if you can find some wells, we are willing to look at them if you don't have the resources to do with them what you want. We will partner with anybody to make money. And we may say, no, we don't want these wells. We don't like the look of them. We don't think they're worth the risk. Or we may say, hell yeah, let's do it. You know, it's up to our interpretation. There's a million ways to make money in this business. 
uh, but it just takes a lot of work and time and effort. And if you do it and stick with it, you can make it happen.